Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu, wassalamu ala Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So last class we spoke about belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you then introduce the hard questions. Why are we here? What is our purpose? Is there actually an afterlife? Now we as a species have advanced in all of the physical sciences whether that be biology, chemistry, physics. We're advancing in other areas like mathematics, astronomy, engineering, technology, and in so many other ways. But there are two facets of life that we have not advanced in human history, not once. We have only ever deviated. What are these? Spiritually and morally. The first cars were used as getaway vehicles and robberies. The first telephones were used to plot conspiracy. The first telegraphs were used to plot long distance mail fraud schemes and Ponzi schemes. The first forms of electricity were used to run medical hoaxes and scam people. When the internet was created, who were the first people to use it? The adult film industry and mobsters. Martin Luther King famously said that the richer we have become materially, the poorer we have become morally and spiritually. There was a study done on capuchin monkeys where they were taught to exchange tokens for food, and almost overnight there were two behaviors formed in them, prostitution and violent robbery. Now, why did I draw these two parallels? Because when humans indulge in their nafsi desires and sin, it makes us worse than the animals, but when we choose to do good, it makes us more beautiful than angels to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is this? Because that's what they do outside of their control. We, as sentient beings, choose whether we want to follow the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. We choose whether we want to follow the guidelines, responsibility, and path toward nobility. So how do we begin to understand the construct of life? How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to worship Him? How do we act out our roles in this grand plan we call life? Where do we learn about all of this from? We learn from the Prophet sallam. As much as I hate to admit it, humankind as a species has proven themselves to be much like sheep. When you see a flock of sheep without a shepherd, what happens? They veer off, they separate, do their their own thing, it becomes difficult to guide them. This is the purpose that the prophets alayhi salam served in the grand framework of human history. The prophets alayhi salam are the shepherds and we are the sheep. We're a communal species after all. That's why we are referred to as the ummah or body of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Each prophet alayhi salam has their ummah and we are tied together by our religion. There's a hadith that states that our ummah is like one body and if one part is hurt, then the whole body hurts. Have you seen how a mother wolf teaches her cubs? Group behavioral therapy. When one cub is acting out, for the interest and survival of the group, that cub's siblings gang up and nip and bite at the naughty cub. So as a group, they condition themselves to be better. When a professional basketball player breaks their pinky, they can't play anymore. Technically speaking, the pinky encompasses 1% of the entire body's surface area, and yet the whole body suffers because of it. I say all of this to highlight the point that we are a unified body and humankind inherently needs guidance lest we deviate ourselves away from the straight path. Each Prophet ﷺ preached the same exact messages of Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leaving insolence and leading lives of nobility, belief in the unseen, the afterlife. But how did these messages differ? I answer this by asking a follow-up question. Do you speak to your mom the same way as your best friend? Do you speak to your boss the same way as your coworker? Do you speak to your role model the same way as a child? This touches on the idea that there was a different mode or medium in which the Prophet ﷺ conveyed the message, whether that be by language, speech, or otherwise, but the core concepts were the same. When the Prophet ﷺ originally spoke to Abu Dhar al-Ghifari from a tribe known to be harsh and highway robbers, the Prophet ﷺ was tough and resolute with him. Who are the best people suited to give da'wah to prisoners and former convicts? Prophets salam always came from their own people. Now, I want to clarify that while the core concepts were the same, the legislation and rules of the Prophet salam differed from messenger to messenger, added on to gradually, and iterated on depending on their time until finally the message was completed and finalized with the Prophet wasallam. An example would be that you don't find much guidances on governance of a society and laws in the message of the Prophet Jesus salam, because that was not for his people during that context. But you find it in abundance during the Prophet wasallam's time because these rules were needed before the seal of the Prophet salam came to pass and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Now, in Islam, you will hear various Prophets salam referred to as either a Nabi or a Rasul. That is a Prophet or a Messenger respectively. A Nabi is someone who was sent to follow the laws of the previous Rasul and a Rasul is sent with a new set of laws and tenets, but they also affirm the same laws as the previous Rasul. Rasuls typically faced more prosecution because when there was a need for a new political, social, and moral reform from the ground up, it was obviously met with that much backlash at scale. And so we have here the rough timeline of the Prophets alayhi wa salatu wa salam. So how is this guidance enacted through the Prophets? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a revelation to send the Prophet alayhi salam of that time, Archangel Gabriel or Jibreel alayhi salam's job is to relay this revelation to that prophet 
Then the Prophet would then in turn spread the message to the people and communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through prayer. We don't know for certain how many Prophets salam, there were in totality, but the number is not restricted to the 25 mentioned in the Qur'an. SubhanAllah, perhaps there were Prophets salam, who were rejected, killed, or were even sent to a very small number of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows for certain. Each Prophet was a Prophet for their people, but one thing to note is that the Prophet wasallam was the last and final messenger. He is the Prophet for all of mankind. That's why his message was tailored for all of us. Musa salam showed power for a people who were beaten down and subjected to oppression under Fir'aun for centuries. He was a liberator. He parted the Red Sea and inspired power. Isa salam was a cure for a very sickly and downtrodden people. So what about the Prophet wasallam's message is so special? The Prophet wasallam has provided us the perfect speech for a very lyrical people. Who are the most famous people today? Musicians. Go to any country. The most known people in any country are their musicians. Babies need constant communication or they become socially anxious or contract other mental illnesses. People who are recluse or don't talk to people at all have deteriorating mental health. Communication is key for us. In the past, you'll notice a religion would be propagated and valid until their people deviated fully, the religion was lost altogether, there was another grouping of people who needed guidance or another reason that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about. And so Allah azza wa jal then sends another prophet alayhi salam and this has continued and continued and continued throughout the history of humankind. And so I want to talk about the lineage of Banu Israel, a term that you're going to hear time and time and time again in the Quran. Now, Jacob or Yaqub alayhi salam was also called what? Israel. And after him are the children of Israel and they make Banu Israel. The story of this family line, Banu Israel, is extensive. Banu Israel has deviated time and time again. They have been given so many prophets for their people alone, alayhi salam. This continues until they killed Zacharias or Zachariah, alayhi salam. They killed Yahya or John the Baptist, alayhi salam. And then they attempted to kill Isa, alayhi salam, but he was raised to Jannah. In Islam, we do not believe that Jesus, alayhi salam, was killed on the cross. We believe that he has been raised before that time came and he waits in a location only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about until his time to return to earth will come alayhi salam where he will have a final battle with the Antichrist or at the Jal during the end of times or Armageddon but more on that in a later class inshallah. This lineage has failed their test for their arrogance. That was the last straw and so the final prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born to Ismail or Ishmael alayhi salam's lineage. Now, on the other hand, with the Christians, when Isa alayhi salam was sent as a Rasul as one last chance for Banu Israel to be saved from their insolence, they instead took it too far and began to worship Isa alayhi salam as a god and even created a trinity. Now let's talk about the trinity. Remember my slide about how each Prophet alayhi salam relayed the message they were given. Now, in the Quran, Archangel Gabriel or Jibreel alayhi salam was given the nickname Ruh al Quddus. What does this translate to? The Holy Spirit. What do Christians believe the Trinity is between? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You begin to notice that the interpretation of the Trinity may have been eerily inspired by what was originally the relationship that Jesus salam had with Archangel Gabriel and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, however deviated. We are not saying that Isa alayhi salam is a part of Godhood. We are not saying that he is burning in a pit of tar and hellfire. We are simply reinstating the same aqidah or creed that has been established since the beginning of mankind and that is Islam. An argument that a lot of people use against the Prophet ﷺ, Muhammad was that he was simply using religion as a means to enact social justice and he did this by stealing many things and teachings from the Old Testament. Now, this is interesting. A lot of parts from the Quran are indeed similar to parts in the Bible, but how could this theft have been possible? For an illiterate Prophet ﷺ in the middle of a desert, this place was so forgotten about that the two superpowers of the time, Persia and Rome, the Byzantine Empire, didn't even bother conquering it because the Middle East was just a backwards armpit of the globe at the time. And the best part was, this land was in both of their backyards. This is unheard of, especially during the Age of Conquest. This brings us to a key point here. I always love to draw parallels and bring unity to people, but there has to be a point where we draw the line. These core tenets and belief systems are not the same. If they were all perfect, then what would be the purpose of Rasulullah ﷺ's message be? To reject one prophet is to reject all prophets. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not differentiate between the prophets in their mission and message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the people of Nuh rejected all of the prophets, even though they just rejected Noah. Because one equals all. I'm saying all of this to get to the point that Islam 
is not a new religion in many ways. It is the same religion that has been preached since Adam alayhi salam over and over and over again. We do certainly believe in the words that Moses or Musa alayhi salam preached to his people. And we do certainly believe in the message that Jesus or Isa alayhi salam preached to his people. But we do not take what has been used as a tool to deviate away from the message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Did man think that we would leave him without any guidance? So as a mercy, Allah has sent these prophets and messengers. We have the perfect example of humankind in the Prophet And miraculously, his life and times, quotes, approvals, and example has been codified and documented called hadith with authenticity that no textbook in existence can match through a process called isnad, where you can track the orator and source of transference from person to person. John heard from Bob, who heard from Carl, who heard from Janine, hundreds of people deep, until you finally reach back to the Prophet ﷺ himself. And what's crazy is that at each step, there are others who can corroborate that as well. So we have the Qur'an, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we have the hadith that contextualizes and helps us interpret and understand the Qur'an. And the Qur'an is what I'll be talking about next, inshaAllah. But for now, just know that the Prophet ﷺ is the most well-biographied human being to ever live.